afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday's webinar. Um, today's webinar is on uh, creating, uh, using collaboration to, to create a smart workspace. Um, I'm your uh, presenter today. My name is Helen Lacey, and Crystal's online too as our moderator, and will be able to, to ask and answer any questions that may be asked towards the end of the session. So, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them into the chat, and we'll address those questions when we get to uh, the end of the webinar. So, today for Wednesday webinar, we're actually going to be talking about um, smart workspaces in particular, and this specifically relates to the smart learning suite software uh, that lots of teachers around Australia are currently using with their smart boards. So let's just have a little bit of a reminder about the smart learning suite and the software that uh, teachers use with their smart boards. SLS, as we like to call it um, consists of smart notebook software which is this lesson creation software I'm delivering uh, this webinar to you in today. It also consists of smart lab which is a gamification uh, game based activities that you can create in your lessons. It consists of smart response where you can create formative and summative assessments uh, for you with your students in your class and most importantly for today, it consists of smart workspaces. And today we're going to talk specifically about smart workspaces and how that gets utilised in the classroom. Before we actually start to address workspaces, I'd like to talk about um, workspaces replacing AMP and what happens. Uh, so historically, the smart learning suite consisted of smart AMP rather than workspaces and AMP had this little logo here and it's been around for several years now and AMP is being migrated out um, and workspaces is replacing smart AMP. So what that will mean is very shortly any content that you've developed in smart AMP you will now need to migrate into uh, the Smart Learning Suite online. And now's the time to actually start that migration. So the big three steps that you need to do to take, make sure that your work gets changed from a Smart AMP workspace and becomes a Smart, uh, a, so it's a smart Workspace, you need to follow these three steps. So the first step is that you need to download any AMP workspace template you have or a WST file from your Google Drive. And once you've downloaded it from your Google Drive, you need to Im import the workspace template, the WST file, into SLO just in the same way that you would do so if you were importing a notebook or PowerPoint. So you open up smart learning suite, you click on the add button and you actually import your WST file into smart learning suite online. And then once you've done that, uh, the AMP workspace will be converted automatically into a smart workspace with an activity on each single page. Um, you need to be able to do this before December 11th and you can import export workspaces and open them in smart amp first so you export them down and then open them in smart amp and then you've got them as a template if you've got any questions around the migration between smart amp and workspaces please contact us um, but hopefully today you will have a clear idea of uh, what the power of workspaces and why we've moved and migrated into this workspace rather than uh, smart amp specifically so what is Smart Learning Suite Online workspace and what are workspace activities. So today's focus is all about workspaces and knowing that workspaces is a collaborative activity where students can participate from their devices in the classroom. It's designed to enable either a whole class group collaboration in a digital online space or a small group collaboration in a digital online space. It is a shared digital space where students can be working together in one canvas at the same time. 
And today I'm going to show you how that looks and how that might be used in the classroom. And I'll actually be asking you to participate as well. So if you have nearby a device handy, just any internet enabled device, I'd like you to grab it because we will be asking you to use that shortly um, to connect and see how workspaces would work in a real classroom. So this is the vision. Smart Learning Suite uh, comes with uh, all smart boards that have been sold or some schools actually have licenses for the Smart Learning Suite that they use across other devices as well as smart. So here's the vision that the teacher would be actually creating the content on their device, on their computer. They have the license to SS SLSO and they're using it as a lesson creation tool. They're able to upload that lesson to the cloud. And then from the cloud, the teacher is able to push that lesson to the student devices. The teacher is also able to create a collaborative workspace for students in small groups to be working in the same digital space at the same time. So from the lesson that the teacher has created, the teacher can actually create collaborative digital spaces where groups of students are working in a digital canvas doing the same uh, things at the same time. So we're actually working together collaboratively. And this is smart workspaces, which we're going to talk about today. So we're not going to be covering AMP or notebook or response today. Our focus will be all on smart workspaces. So once you're in Smart Learning Suite online, um, the teacher can actually create activity slides or presentation slides. Um, an activity page would be a page where the students can participate in the activities and move through the smart notebook document at their own pace and do their own activities. A presentation page is where the teacher is in control and everything that the teacher creates in Smart Learning Suite online is pushed to the student devices. Now, Workspace actually class classifies as an activity page. So I'm gonna show you today how that's going to work. When you have created a workspace activity, and you've imported it into your Smart Learning Suite online, you are then able to make a collaborative activity and select the number of teams you want working in that workspace. You can manipulate and move students into the workspace that you want them to be in, and then the students can work together at the same time in that digital space. The teacher can view each digital space that the, the students are working in together. So we're gonna show those how to create those teams today and example real classroom examples of how teachers might have used workspace in their particular settings so to do that the first thing that we need to do to access smart workspaces is to go to smart learning suite online and our profile so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to take myself directly to uh, my smart learning suite um, profile. Now, if you don't have this, you will need to go to suite.smarttech.com and then you'll be asked to log in. So once you log in and you put in your password and you will then have access to your storage, your database of lessons that you've created on your computer that you have uploading to the Smart Learning Suite online to, your, to this cloud-based storage. It's very easy to add lessons. You're just going to click on the add button and you're able to upload the files that you actually have. So you can upload smart notebook lessons, PDF lessons and PowerPoint lessons. Once they're uploaded into your cloud storage, you have a, a profile page that looks like this and you can actually rearrange your profile page if you choose to to have a different kind of look where you're listed with just the titles or if you want a visual prompt you can see the first page of your notebook just to have that visual prompt you can sort them by date and you can search for them as your library um, gets big so what i'm going to show you today are some real examples of uh, workspaces being used in a classroom setting. So the first one that I'm going to show you is um, a higher ed example. It's a really very simple notebook. This is being created by someone on their computer and uploaded, uploaded to the SLS cloud. So if I open this up by clicking on it, what then happens is this lesson I'm now 
now accessing through SLSO on in the cloud. So let's just recap on what we have access to when we're in SLSO. The first thing is the mouse button so I can mouse and move things around. The second uh, thing that I have access to is I can pick up a pen and write and I can write in a thin pen or I can choose a thick pen and a different color or I can even select a color from the color wheel and write in a different color if I wanted to write in a different color. I've also got access to an eraser and different size erasers, so I can choose a large eraser and erase big uh, items out if I choose to do so. I can pop through my slides by clicking on the arrows. And if I want to have that visual cue of how many slides I've got, I just need to click on the number. And then I'm given the visual clue of how many slides I've actually got in the smart notebook that I've created um, and then uploaded to SLSO. So it's very familiar. Everything I've created within Smart Notebook is now appearing in SLSO. I can have my slides visible to me if I wanted to do so. If I don't want to have my slides vis visible, I can just um, click on the arrows either side. I can do small editing on the fly. So if I wanted to add a blank page, I can cl click the plus button and I can now add a blank page or I can create a shouted out activity. So for now, I'm just going to show you this particular lesson. So this particular lesson was created for a higher ed setting, an example lesson of higher ed. And the question posed to the university students was, should university college run entirely on renewable energy? So um, when this particular lesson is being showed, um, the teacher or the lecturer or the educator might decide that they want to be in control of this particular lesson. And um, to do that, I'm just going to click to, to demonstrate the difference between being in presentation mode where the educator is actually pushing the content from their device to the students and they, the students are seeing exactly what the educator is showing. Um, you just need to click on the little pe people button here. And then that people button will give us um, are two lesson pacing options. The first lesson pacing, pacing option is that I can be in teacher mode where all the content I'm actually showing is being pushed to the student devices. So I'm gonna actually ask you to hop in and see this and I can see that Linda has already joined. So what you actually need to do to do that is you need to go to hellosmart.com as it says on the board just here. And once you've gone to hellosmart.com com um, you will then need to put in the teacher code which is 1932 and once you've put in 1932 you will then uh, need to put in your name so add your name and as you join the lesson I will actually as the teacher I can actually see the people participating so I've got Katie I've got Joe I've got Linda I've got Rob and everybody in the class currently has um, actually access, I've got Chris in there, just to the page that I am showing. So I'm gonna remove my Hello Smart 1932 by clicking on the arrow. And right now I'm in teacher mode, so you shouldn't be able to progress through the slides. You should all be seeing the slide that I'm showing you right now. And if I go back to the original slide, that original slide will be appearing on your pages at the same time. So the question that was posed to the students was, should University College run entirely on renewable energy? And the next activity that occurred in this particular lesson as an example was a shout it out. So the shout it out means that the students can actually participate in telling us whether or not they believe that uh, college and university should actually um, run entirely on new renewables and you have the option to add plus or a minus or an interesting fact. So, um, so you can actually add your own things there if you wanted to have a little test. I'm just going to do a simple example of shouting a yes. Um, and we can send the responses in there. So if you wanted to uh, respond to that, you could. And this is actually one of the class lab activities, not our particular focus to get today. But you get the idea of what this is. So thank you for joining in there. We've got some people who are responding to the renewal, save the planet. Let's do it. Um, and all those things. So this is the sorts of things that might be asked in, in a university setting. Now, I'm actually going to progress on. 
even though um, you uh, <laughs> are getting really brilliant answers happening there on whether this university should be entirely renewable. Um, as the lesson has progressed, so I'm just going to go back to these slides, we've asked the question, should it be renewable? We've done a shout it out, and now I'm on the workspaces. So as the teacher and in teacher mode, I have to click start for class for workspaces to uh, actually start. So I'm going to click on start. And once I click on start, the first thing that's given to me is that we have nine people joined this particular lesson. You can see the nine people who are joined just here, or eight, we just had one drop off. Um, and what we want to, what I want to be able to do is I want to start this workspace for all of you. But before I do that, I have to decide how many teams I'm going to have. Well, I'm choosing two teams and I'd like one team to tell me for renewables and one team to tell me against renewables. So as you can see, you have been populated automatically into team one or team two. Well, I might decide that today Sue and Molly are going to vote no and Rob and Tony are doing no for renewables and team two, Linda, John, Katie and Chris are going team yes for renewable. So when I click start workspace, you will all now be in that workspace. So team one being no and team two being yes for renewable. So you should be putting in there using the icons that you have in front of you. You should be have a access to um, you should have access to uh, the pens and you should have access to an eraser and you should have access to a text uh, function so you can actually add notes. So you, I can see that somebody has said that they are loss of industry and jobs in here. You can actually add images. So well done to the people in team one workspace. Um, but as the teacher, I can actually view what's happening in team one's workspace. I can also choose to actually see what's happening in team two's workspace at the same time. So team two have been really productive and they've even managed to put an image in here of some renewable energy. So I, as the teacher, can draw attention to that. I can annotate over the top of what's been put into team two's workspace. I might decide that I want to add my image into here. Um, so we've got people who've already selected images by uh, searching uh, on a safe search online and putting images into that workspace so you can see that it doesn't matter where you are in the country um, or if you're in my classroom you are able to participate and you're able to add content into these workspaces you're able to add images you're able to add text you're able to do writing and um, you can add whatever you want into these workspaces at the same time so I can see and if I add in purple writing here you're all going to be able to see that content at the same time so we've got lots and lots of um, input happening in that workspace and I'm actually going to hop out of this workspace right now because that one which I was showing you was just splitting the teams into two workspaces I'm going to give you a couple of other examples where workspaces have worked particularly well so this this example here is a, a teacher who was teaching pass to year 10 and the students had to analyze um, a sporting um, a sporting video and decide how they could improve the tactics of the opposition team. So in this particular scenario, I'm turning my, it, this into um, teacher mode first of all I've got all of these people here so everything I'm showing you're actually going to be seeing on my on your screens at the same time so the instructions from the teacher was you're going to watch a video of Barcelona and the Champions League and you have to stop Messi scoring the goal. So the whole class would be at the smart board. They'd watch the YouTube video of Messi scoring the goal. And then what the teacher had actually done was to create handouts. So handouts means that if I click start as the teacher here, you're all going to get a version of this and you're going to be able to participate on this particular activity independently so the person next to you isn't going to see what you're doing the teacher is actually um, allowing you to for you to pick up your pens and decide how you were going to stop Messi from scoring this goal using a handout space now 
if the teacher wanted to, the teacher could turn this into student mode. And if I turn this into student mode, you're going to get a little message that says you can now go on to any page you choose. So you might have several pages that you need to analyze as a handout on how you're going to stop messy scoring that particular goal. And as the students have progressed through this and they've done their sport analysis and they've had their ideas and their tactics on how they're going to stop Messi scoring the goal, I then might draw everybody back into teacher mode. And when I've gone back to teacher mode, you, the whole class is now seeing the same workspace that I'm on. And this, in this instance, this workspace was set up by the teacher to put people into teams of four. So they've carried out their handouts. <clears throat> And what you were going to ask you to do in this particular scenario is you're going to have to take some tactical messages, um, work as teams. So you might be working as tables and you're going to have to take some tactical messages to uh, your to the team against Barcelona. So we might then want the teams to actually be, um, and I'm going to see if I can get this workspace happening here. Um, I think because I've set it up before, unfortunately the workspace isn't set up, but it could be that I'm then organizing my class according to the table they're sitting on so that they have to work collaboratively together to choose three messages that they want to take to Barcelona on how they can stop Messi scoring the goal in the future. So you get the idea of what you can do and you can even get to the point where you're um, moving objects around on the page and this particular team scenario is set up according to tables in the physical classroom next to one another. So that's another example of workspaces. The third workspace that I'm going to create is slightly different. So some of you may have seen this particular lesson previously. This was a lesson that we've covered in another webinar on how uh, primary school students learn how to be safe digital citizens online. So this lesson was created in collaboration with Dr. Bron Stuckey, who uh, talks about gamification. And we've delivered this lesson as a team in uh, the smart team ANZ several times. Um, and this lesson is really great in Smart Learning Suite Online where the students can actually uh, progress through at their own pace. So we turn it into student mode and the, stu the, the uh, students can actually carry on with the lesson um, independently. They can choose sections of the lesson. They can go back to the home page and refer back to it when they want to. So the students can actually progress on and participate in these activities using the Smart Learning Suite online uh, scenario. So the whole idea of this particular lesson was <clears throat> the students uh, were learning how to be safe digital citizens. They had to learn how to be, uh, how to, uh, to get 100 points. When they got 100 points, I'm going to turn it back into teacher mode so you're all seeing what I'm seeing. When they got 100 points, they could create a digital avatar. And this was the home page and they could progress on at their own pace and choose which activities they wanted to do by clicking on these squares and it would take them to an alternate page to do activities. Now, as we done this lesson several times and the students actually created a superhero one of the things I'm actually going to show you was at the end of the lesson we've been asking the students to identify the um, the pro what a safe digital superhero should look like so in this scenario uh, we might have captured this superhero that the students have made but I might have forgotten when I was editing to actually create this page as a workspace because I'd like the whole class to identify one thing that would make this uh, this cartoon a digital superhero of being safe online. So to be able to create this page as a workspace on the fly, it's actually quite easy. I need to click on the people button here and then that prompts me saying that I can actually now um, convert this page to an activity and I'd like to convert this workspace into uh, this page into a collaborative workspace activity so clicking on create for a collaborative workspace activity means that now I can
can choose again how many teams I would like. And again, we've still got eight people joined, so I can have eight teams. But in this instance, I want everybody working in this same digital space. So I'm going to have everybody on one team. And I'm inviting you guys to put into this workspace how you think you should behave if you are a safe digital citizen. So maybe somebody is going to write that, that you shouldn't give out your passwords um, or you can add right now anything that you think that would make um, a, a safe digital superhero. So please add your contributions. You should all be able to add and write in there now. You should be able to text, uh, add some text. You might uh, put an image of um, anything else, uh, but you can uh, contribute your uh, information into this workspace and as a class you're asking all the students to work in this digital space at the same time. Now this was a really interesting exercise that we actually did with students um, and why this was particularly interesting was uh, this was really the first time that the students had actually worked collaboratively in the same digital space and as you can imagine um, it was really exciting for some of them and quite a lot of students realised they could do this pretty quickly. <laughs> and rub out some content that somebody else had written. Um, so this was opened up a really good and interesting discussion about how to behave appropriately when you are in a digital space and whether or not you should be uh, deleting or removing information without somebody's permission and how you discuss that. So this was, it, it's, it's interesting and it's really great fun to have the whole class in, in that workspace, which you can do in workspaces too. Okay, kind words, awesome. Now I'm gonna go back to the home page. And I'm actually going to show you the last example of um, how to uh, create a workspace. This particular lesson was created by the lovely Nerida at Integrate AV and she presented it at our Inspire Greatness conference. And again, this whole lesson was delivered using Smart Learning Suite Online. So Nerida had uploaded this lesson to uh, the cloud and then she was pushing this lesson to the student devices. So she actually uh, had some of the slides that she wanted to show um, to the whole class so she was in control and some of the slides the students could actually um, participate at their own speed so she asked the students what did they know about the Nobel Prize she did a little assessment on what they did know and she gave them some information about uh, women in science and who has won the Nobel Peace Prize and she talked to them about the, the information behind it, understanding the science behind these. And what uh, Nerida then did was uh, you could choose to go and find out more information about the Nobel Prize in chemistry or physics or women's contribution to science by clicking on this. And so from this particular slide, you are, the teacher has switched from teacher mode to student mode and each of the students that are in this space could click on one of these images and it would take them to a link and a worksheet and a video so they could find out either about the Nobel Prize in chemistry or the Nobel Prize in physics or the Nobel or the contribution in science and they could progress at their own speed and it was differentiated according to learning. Now at the end of the lesson uh, Nerida had asked all of the students to actually work in a workspace so um, I'm going to switch back into teacher mode so that you're all seeing what I'm seeing and in this workspace here so again this hasn't been set up as a workspace so a reminder how to set up a workspace on the fly you click the people button and then you choose collaborative workspace activity and what uh, Nerida allowed the students to do here was to work in small groups small teams so they actually had teams of four where the students could actually uh, research for other women in, in um, other women in, in science and so each team would choose find research find out a particular uh, woman in science that they knew about and they would uh, add their content into that workspace about that woman in science and then as a whole class at the end of this they could see what information they could in a short period of time now um remembering that this probably requires people to actually add an image in here you can add images from your phone but you can also um, 
Ada Lovelace that you can also um, look on the internet for images um, and we might be talking about the famous coder Ada Lovelace as an example and we can add that famous female scientist into this space so we've got Marie Curie here team two have been not so productive yet so they haven't got a famous female scientist but you can see I've got the same title and the same logo in every workspace but I've left it up to you guys to put in um, a, a famous scientist that you might decide that you want to put into that particular workspace so this is where we've got four teams working collaboratively all in the same place excellent some lovely work there from um the team four workspace team and they're adding images as well as being able to add text and uh, to write notes at the same time so as you can see you guys may not have used workspaces before but you've already uh, collaboratingly brilliantly in this workspace and you can see that the mode i'm in as a teacher i can actually decide who i want into my workspaces and i can really see that i uh, can have full control over what my students are doing and i might want to draw attention to um, the students um, in my class on somebody who's doing a really awesome job or working collab collaboratively and has an, an excellent idea of how workspaces are run so hopefully today you've got a good idea of what workspaces of, is about um, that vision that i talked about at the very beginning where the teacher creates content in smart notebook uploads to the cloud and then is able to use the smart board to determine a workspace for groups of students to work digitally in the same collaborative space at the same time if you would like some more slow paced videos about uh, smart working space we have some youtube content and we'll make sure that you have access to these links after the webinar um, and you can actually see uh, the three videos that we have put up so far and there will be more videos to follow on workspaces and how you add content and how you create flow in your lessons using workspaces so hopefully that's been useful for everybody today. I'm just wondering if there were any questions out there in the chat, Crystal. Hi, Helen, I've got two questions here. Uh, first question from Linda, how do you upload your lessons into SLSO? Okay, awesome. So just going back to the home page here, uh, this button, this button once you've logged into the suite.smartdeck.com and you've put in your email address and you've logged in this big button here allows us to upload any files that we want into slso and they can be notebook files pdf files or powerpoint files and as soon as you navigate to where they are on your machine they will upload and then exist in the smart learning suite cloud okay Fantastic. Michael would also like to know, can you run SLSO lessons directly from the smart board without having to plug in a laptop? Absolutely. So our brand new smart boards that have the inbuilt computer will allow you to actually run your entire lesson without having to plug in any device. So you can log into your SLSO on the um, new smart board. So the 6000 series MX and the 7000 series smart boards that have the inbuilt computers and you will be able to deliver your entire lesson straight from the board. So you don't even need to plug in a computer or take your computer with you. So if you're a casual teacher it's really great you can log into your profile and deliver your lessons and deliver workspaces directly from those boards okay any other questions that's it for today thanks helen great thanks everybody and look forward to seeing you next week thank you